then I think the mind is both inner, so it's fully embodied, not just in skull, and it's inter, it's between you and other people on the planet. And when you start thinking this way, you can really show um, from a scientific point of view how the system is a complex system. And then if the mind is indeed a self-organizing, emergent, embodied and relational process, you can understand why the number one predictor of our health is our social relationships that are integrated. You know, because relationships are in part where the mind is. So we live in a, in a, in a world of energy and information flow. And that's, you know, that's kind of a view of energy. Now, energy has a whole other thing, Cynthia. And if you want me to get into it, I can. It takes us into the nature of awareness, which would be really fun to do. I don't know if Feldenkrais approach would find this useful, but I'm happy to talk about it if you want, because there's a whole nother dimension of energy that when I did the 10,000 person study of the wheel of awareness and people started having this experience when they got into the hub, um, it really became important to ask physicists um, what exactly is energy itself, even though there's many forms of it, so there's no one thing, but what do they all share in common? And they share this fundamental quality, which is it's the movement from possibility to actuality. And then when you graph out that possibility to actuality uh, on what's called a probability curve, so it goes from 100% with actuality down to near zero for possibility, suddenly you get a graph that when it's mapped out onto the wheel findings, suddenly everything becomes clear. It's kind of remarkable. Wow, so, that sounds very interesting. You know, we could talk about that and it sort of gives us a window into mm -hmm. what, uh, where consciousness might arise from and why choice and change may arise from consciousness because it looks like the very experience of being aware may emerge when this probability position is in the lowest point, which is the ultimate source of all forms. It's this formless source of all forms, which is, uh, in, in physics terms, it's called the quantum vacuum or the sea of potential. And I think that that's, with a million question marks before and after this, could this be true that consciousness arises from there? And if it's true, it's why dropping into awareness is not only the subjective experience of knowing, it's dropping the probability position of energy into the sea of potential from which all new options arise. Mm -hmm. And the natural push of a complex system is to enable integration to arise. That's the natural way self-organizing systems move so that when you drop into consciousness, you're enabling integration to be freed up. Mm -hmm. So that is amazing. And if it's uh, true, it'll be really fun to amazing. play with that as a field, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as you're speaking, my mind is kind of going to these places where we have, in a free associate, a free associative way to what we do in the Feldenkrais method. Mm -hmm. So if you could imagine for a moment lying on the floor for hours and hours and hours. You know, we, our training programs sometimes are eight weeks in a row, 10 days at least, sometimes shorter, but for very long periods of time. Mm -hmm. People do lots of movements that become smaller and smaller and smaller, and sometimes then larger and larger. But the muscle tonus and the whole system becomes even. And Dr. Deutsch talks about the significance of this in the book, his last book, The Brain That, uh, what is it? That Heals Itself. Yeah, the brain's, the, the, brain healing, heals. the brain's way of healing. Or, right. Yeah, anyway, so he talks about the significance of re the evenness of muscle tonus because it's not about a muscle being strong, but it's about everything becoming even So because you potentiate the system for new neuronal firing patterns when you have this evenness of tonus. And so we spend enough time to actually achieve those states where we begin to move with a brand new self-image in ways that we would never experience ourselves. So we create new states of being, and within those states, we feel extremely well, healthy, capable, confident. 
stable, uh, connected to others. We feel sometimes like we don't have a body, so to speak, that we're floating because we're unencumbered by the usual tethers that pull us this way and that.